Hi everyone, Marcus Mods here, and today I'm going to teach you how to turn an LED on and off using a JFET as a shunt switch. This video will feed into a larger series where I teach you how to do true bypass switching like the pros. Today's video is broken up into segments, those time codes are in the time bar below, and then also I have some affiliate links in the description below for the tools I'm going to be using if you feel like supporting the channel. For those of you with some background in electronics, here's the schematic for the circuit. There's also a link in the description to download it. For those of you without a background in electronics, we'll go ahead and get into a little bit of JFET theory so we can understand how our circuit works. We'll start with our schematic. As you can see, our JFET has three connections, a drain, a gate, and a source. In this example, it's easiest to think of the JFET as a water faucet. The connection between the drain and the source is a pipe that water can flow through, and the gate is the handle that you use to shut it off. Obviously we've got electrons flowing here instead of water, but it's the same basic concept. When we turn the faucet on in this example, current will flow through our 10K resistor, through our JFET, and then through our 1K resistor to ground. When we turn the faucet off, it'll block the flow of current, meaning that the current flows through our 10K resistor and then out through our LED, lighting it up. Now you might be saying to yourself, Marcus, that's all well and good, but how do I turn my JFET faucet on and off? Well, your JFET faucet is controlled by the voltage difference between the gate and the source, which we'll call VGS. In this case, VGS is defined as the voltage at the gate minus the voltage at the source. When this voltage is zero or positive, our water faucet is turned on. The JFET acts as a low resistance device around 100 ohms, and current flows through the JFET to ground. When this voltage is sufficiently negative, it turns the water faucet off. The JFET acts as a high resistance device, which blocks the current to ground and reroutes the current through our LED, lighting it up. When we start to look at our circuit in terms of VGS, it starts to make a lot of sense. The LED is off when the switch is off, because we've got an open circuit on the source pin of our JFET. VGS is not sufficiently negative because there's no current flowing through our voltage divider. When we flip the switch to the on position, it completes the voltage divider circuit on the left side of our JFET circuit. This delivers 5 volts to the source of our JFET, which makes VGS negative, turns our JFET into a high resistance device, and reroutes the current through our LED. Alright, now that we have an understanding of our circuit, we'll need to go ahead and put it on the breadboard. So the first thing we're going to do is add power to our breadboard. Here we've got our power jack. You can see the long lead is positive and the short lead is negative. In this case, the positive is the red wire and negative is the black wire. And it's pretty standard. So we're going to go ahead and attach it to our board. We're going to attach the red wire to the red rail on our board and then the black wire to the blue rail on our board so that we have our positive and negative rails. From there, we need to grab our power adapter. So I'm using a Boss PSA120 adapter. It's a pretty standard adapter for guitar pedals. So we will just go ahead and plug that right in. Next, we need to go ahead and add our switch to our board. In this case, we're using a single pole, single throw switch. So we have one common pin in the middle and then two output pins on either side. You can tell which output the common is connected to by looking at the lever on the switch. The lever will act like an arrow, pointing at whichever pin the common is connected to. So now we need to go ahead and put that on our board. And then for future purposes, just so the circuit is off when we start, we're going to flip that to the right hand position. From there, we're going to go ahead and add our 9 volt power. We're going to connect the common pin of our switch to the plus 9 volts rail of our board. That's going to be the red rail. And you want to make sure you get it in the right spot. I did not have it in the right spot the first time. Then we're going to grab our 150 ohm resistor, and we're going to connect one hand to the right hand side of our switch, and then the other end to just some other point on our board. We'll then attach our 180 ohm resistor from that other end, that loose end of the 150 ohm, to ground. 
This will create our 5 volt voltage divider that we need to control our JFET. So next we need to go ahead and grab our JFET. In this case we're using a J112. If you're looking at the flat face of the transistor, the pinout from left to right is going to be drain source gate. And you can find that just by googling J112 pinout. So we'll go ahead and add that bad boy to the board. Now we need to grab a jumper wire and connect it between the middle pin of our JFET and the junction where our 150 and 180 ohm resistors meet. That's going to supply the necessary 5 volts to that source pin of our JFET. From there, we need to add in our couple 1K resistors between the gate of our JFET and ground and the source of our JFET and ground. And that is just going to allow you to maintain a negative VGS when you connect the 9 volt power supply to our voltage divider. Then the last step is getting power to our JFET. We need to start by connecting our 10K resistor between our positive 9 volt rail and the drain of our JFET. Then we need to grab our LED. I'm sure you guys have probably seen these before. Our LED is going to have two legs, a long leg and a short leg. And the long leg is going to be positive, the short leg is going to be negative. And you can also tell the negative side by a little flat side on the LED. So we'll go ahead and connect the long leg to the drain of our JFET and then the short leg to ground or the blue rail on our board. Then we can flip the switch on our circuit and our LED should light up. We've got a functional circuit. So we'll go ahead and flip it a few times just to show you that this isn't a fluke, that it works consistently. And then from there, we are good to go. As always, I'd like to thank you all for watching, never stop learning, and remember, make cool shit.